Uh, greetings of the day, everyone. I, Tafail Sharif, privilege to welcome you all to the first children's edition of Orange City Literature Festival organized by SGR Knowledge Foundation in association with GH Raisoni University, powered by Raisoni Group of Institutions. The motive behind this fest is to explore the ways that should help the students to develop emotional intelligence. Exposing children to quality literature can contribute to the creation of responsible, successful, and a caring individuals. Stories have the power to promote emotional and moral development. You can start a story with a nugget of an idea. The story ideas are just like seeds. You nurture them, they will grow. And this first will enable them to develop into caring, individual, and a friendly people. And for that, we have a very wonderful personality who is going to present on the topic using story seeds to come up with the story ideas by Sorin Desai, sir. Sir is an ideator, a creative writer, a story crafter, a mentor and a teller, as well as a published poet and a comic writer as well. Sir enjoys reading, writing, telling stories in every form and have worked with over 2,000 entrepreneurs, professionals and students on story crafting, creative writing and thinking ideation and also content development. Sir has facilitated over 200 plus workshop sessions for institutions and events like Orange City Literature Festival, IIM University, Hindustan Times, Mumbai University, and many more. I once again welcome you, sir, in the children's edition of OCLF. Now, without further ado, I would like to hand over to you, sir. Thank, thank you, Dufail. Uh, thank you, Amit. Uh, thank you, everyone at uh, Team Rai Sony, especially uh, Dr. Mrundal. It's always a pleasure to be associated with you guys. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly uh, put up my screen. Okay, uh, is my screen visible? Yes, sir, clearly visible. Okay. Great. So, uh, like uh, Tufail rightly said, uh, you know, story ideas, you can think of them as seeds, right? Uh, but why am I calling them seeds? Uh, one, I love I love nature. Okay, and uh, you know, just outside here, uh, you know, I have this beautiful uh, garden view, and I've got my own small garden, right? Uh, and it's amazing, right? That when you look at seeds, uh, they they they're so uh, minute, right? You you look at them, and if you have no idea what they are capable of. Uh, you would just prob you know just throw them away. If you've seen a seed for the first time, you'll wonder what is this? Maybe it's just a piece of stone. But that small seed has so many possibilities, right? It can turn from anything, uh, you know, a, a herb to a shrub to even a giant oak, right? And all of that is within that small seed, right? And but not every seed will sprout, right? So nature in its, uh, you know, or nature in her rather in her uh, immense, uh, you know, uh, understanding and power and, you know, ability to create miracles also knows that not everything grows. Some things will not, right? And that's why when you put in like a farmer or a gardener, you put in seeds, some of them will sprout, some of them won't, right? And that's why I use this idea of story seeds. The idea being, you know, at times we want to write. Could be a story, could be a poem, could be a, a, even a movie, could be a short story. And uh, we probably come up with an idea and would say, hey, this is interesting. I'm going to write about this. Uh, and at some point you might be, you know what, I'm not really enjoying this anymore, but I can't think of something else. And it used to happen to me and I've worked with thousands of, uh, you know, children age 7 to 77. Yeah, Anyone who, you know, enjoys stories is a child at heart. Uh, and I would say, okay, how can I help? And that's why I came up with this idea of story seeds. So here's what we're going to do. This is a hands-on session. From here on until the end of the session, all you're going to do is keep a notebook with you, uh, you know, a pad, a couple of pens, pencils, and you're just going to write. Okay. Do not think too much about what is uh, coming onto the paper. Just whatever comes up, just put it down. You can always evaluate it later. Okay. So we're going to run through a couple of exercises and I'm going to give you some time you know, in between each exercise so that you can put down your thoughts onto paper. So pens and paper ready. Okay, super. So here's, uh, you know, uh, like I'd mentioned, seeds, right? You plant them, some of them, uh, you know, turn into shrubs, some of them turn into small trees, some of them turn into giant trees. And that is what's going to happen with these story seeds 
that you are collecting right now onto paper. Yeah. So what? What? Why? Why do you need so many story seeds? Right. Because a lot of times, you know, and and, and you, what you see on screen is, you know, we'll give you, uh, you know, a, not just a warm up, but we'll give you a better idea about why we need so many of them. So this is an ordinary branch, right? Now, if I tell you, what can you use this for beyond, let's say, uh, you know, it's a stick, so you can use it to clear maybe uh, something out. But what else can you do with it, right? And I've said magical. So what I'm going to do is I'm giving you 60 seconds. In 60 seconds, I want you to come up with 10 uses for this. Okay, so the timer starts now. Can be anything, including magic. Quickly, right? No, uh, I've said 10. If you can come up with 15, 20, fantastic. Let's see what you get. And you don't have to be very, very descriptive about it. Something as simple as you can use it as a sword. Fantastic. Good enough. Sword. Good enough. Halfway through, 30 more seconds to go. If you're done with 10, add a few more. If they make no sense at all, awesome. I love nonsensical uh, ideas. You never know what comes out of it. Yeah? Whatever comes up. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so how did you do? 10, 15, 20, even if it's five, no problem. Now, what, what, what did you achieve? You looked at an everyday object that you would not even notice. And now all of a sudden it turned into a, a magic wand. It turned into a sword. It turned into a chopstick for a giant. You know, it turned into a Kindle for a fire. It could turn into a, 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 a broomstick for a witch. You could turn, you can do whatever you want with it, right? And that is the power of, you know, looking beyond the obvious. And that's what we're trying to today do with the story seeds. We're going to look at the things that are obvious, that are around us, that we see. And we are going to say, look beyond them. And this exercise that I just uh, shared with you is a very powerful exercise that you should do with Something you can just pick up a say, okay, here's a here's a glass. Ten th things. So before you start writing, you know, do an exercise like this. It will help you to warm up your mind, your brain. Okay. So now moving to the first set of exercises. Okay. Now this one is called image speaks. So as as it says, a picture can tell a thousand words, but a few words can change its story. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to take you know, some time, look at an image that's up on screen and whatever thought comes up, we're just going to put that down onto paper without analysis, without editing, without criticizing, without wondering, is this going to work? Is this going to turn into, remember, story seeds, not every one of them will sprout. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. So here's the first image. Look at it. What does it remind you of? Put that down. What do you think, you know, is going on here? Put that down. Who do you think or what do you think, you know, these figurines or these, these artworks or whatever you think they are, what do you think they are? Put that down. Now imagine they're real. Imagine, you know, this, you know, this is a fantasy story and they're real. And, you know, they're climbing this, this wall. Why? What do you think they're trying to achieve? Are they trying to get to something or are they escaping something? Write that down. If you see, you can, you know, in through the wind, in, in, there are windows, which means there are maybe people in there, right? Now imagine you are in there and all of a sudden you look out of the window and you see these, you know, these weird, you know, you know, you can call them scary looking, you can call them funny looking, but obviously, you know, it's, it's, it's not normal. And you see these kind of figures rising up, you know, climbing up. What's the first thought that you're going to have? Obviously, you'll probably want to run away, but let's say you are the adventurous kind, right? Uh, you probably have a sword or a gun that you can manage them with. But you will be curious, what are these? Uh, you know, are these aliens? You know, is this some kind of magic that's going on? You know, what's happening? 
So what would be the th first thought if you were in that window, in one of those windows? Write that down. Also, you know, why am I, you know, running through this? Because I don't want you to spend too much time thinking about it. All I want you to do is, whatever is the first thought that comes up, put that down. That's it. You know, you're not trying to critically analyze this. You're just letting your imagination loose, right? So, this is one image. Okay, let's move to another image, right? Now, you might say, oh, but I, fantasy is fine. What about, what if, you know, I'm looking at something every day? Can I get story seeds out of that? Absolutely. So, let's take an image which, which is an everyday image, you know, uh, a, a kid, uh, you know, who's possibly got, I, I think it's some sort of a, you know, a turtle or a tortoise or something. I'm not really sure what the image is, but it does not matter. The, you know, the kid's in nature and uh, is obviously curious about what's being placed on the palm. So, so what if, what do you think is, you know, is going to happen from you? Uh, you know, it, it, it can be magical, it can be science fiction, but it can be very, very, very everyday, right? What do you think will happen? How, how will the kid react to this? If you were in 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 the stair in the stair, and imagine it was a spider, right? And and, and if you love, love spiders, fantastic. If you do not, how would you have reacted? Put that down. So, my point here is that you can turn anything into a story seed, and as you you know start collecting these story seeds in your notebook, what will happen is over a period of time. You know, you'll have so many of these story seeds that you want to write something, you will not have to wonder, what do I write about? All you do is pick up your story seeds book, just flip through, pick up something and start writing. And you'll be amazed at how much more you'll be able to write simply because you have something, you know, that you already thought through. You're not having to think through at that point. Should I write about this? Should I write about that? You, you probably have over a period of time, 30, 40, 50, 100 story seeds. All you have to do is pick one and, you know, plant it into your fertile soil here. All right, let's let's move to another. Uh, I mean, I, I love fantasy. So most of my uh, images that you will see will be in that space. But, you know, I just had the other, uh, the previous image to show you. It need not be fantasy. Okay, so what do you see here? What's happening here? What will happen from here? Who's going to save this town, you know, from this dragon? Or is this dragon the, you know, protagonist, the hero of the story or the heroine of the story? And, you know, the, the town is the, you know, evil one. Sure, why not? Uh, why should the dragons always be the bad, bad ones, right? So, you know, what happens here? Why is the dragon attacking the town? Or is the dragon actually an entertainer and, you know, you know, she's just entertaining the town and this is part of an entertainment. I don't know. It's your, you know, your story seeds. You, you decide. Anything is fine. Okay. So, so that's another image. Likewise, this, you know. Okay. My suggestion. Do not just put story seeds on, on, into your notebook. Each time you come across an image that, you know, catches your attention, just you know, take a screenshot or, you know, save it into a folder, you know, create a folder, uh, you know, on your computer. And, you, you know, if you find something physically, that's fine as well. Put it into a file and, and just say interesting or, you know, funny or, you know, whatever. Just put down a couple of adjectives so that anytime you come across, a, a, you know, an image that matches any of these adjectives, it goes into that, right? What's the, what's the idea? The next time you have a few minutes, open that file or click on your computer, just browse through and suddenly some image, some ideas will pop up, some story seeds will start to develop, put them in, right? And after a point, it becomes fun. I have five, six notebooks just filled, you know, with these story seeds. So I never run out of things to write because anytime I'm, I, I feel like writing, I just pick up one of the books, just flip through, pick, you know, take a story seed and start developing it. Yeah. So when you look at this, what do you see? Okay, now you say, yeah, there are eggs, but what else do you see? No. The obvious, it's obvious there are eggs with some faces made on them, but what else do you see? What if instead of eggs, these were balloons, right? How, what, how would the story change? What if they were helium balloons? Would the story change? What if, you know, uh, you know the, the, these were, you know, like the minions, these were actual characters in your story? You know, they, 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 they're eggs, they're fragile, but they're also alive. You know, what kind of a story would that be, right? Okay, 
here's something which is you know more science fiction possibly no longer science fiction or you know we're getting into that space where uh, you'll have you know you'll have robots and ai you know talking to you and probably you know maybe a couple of years down the line instead of someone like me you probably have a robot you know uh, facilitating a session you know you 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 switch on you know your your monitor and you probably find you know a robot uh, you know or an ai driven system you know taking the same sessions who knows yeah so so what what do you see when you see you know this on your screen put that down okay and i can i can you know i i have plenty of images you know we are almost at the end of the uh, images i've chosen here but i have hundreds of images on on my computer and it does not really matter what image you choose pick one what does it inspire you to write down put that down and then move to the next yeah so you know then this is a very intriguing image if you see these are planets right so who is she you know is she the creator maybe is she is, is she the destroyer maybe is she you know a, a child who has the ability to be able to you know uh, manipulate or control worlds i have no idea you do it's in your story seeds yeah okay one more and this is the final image uh, you know in this in the images that I, as i said i love fantasy uh, so most of my images you know will be uh, you know outside of the space of uh, real estate but that's all right okay so this is a story seed exercise i call image speaks right and it's a powerful exercise i use this more than any other exercise that i'm going to share this with you and i have a lot of fun i have shared this with hundreds of people these kind of images and many of them have come up with some fantastic stories yeah but it all begins with story seeds we are not looking to write stories here we are looking to create story seeds so for instance you know as an example if you look at this image and you say okay what's going on here and you and and you find that you know there's this there's this train that's running over the tracks which turns into a tree right and, and you say okay what's going on here there's this railway track and it turns into a tree and, and you say what if you know there was this world in which uh, you know instead of iron tracks uh, you know trains ran on you know on, on you know on uh, on vines right so you have these creepers vines you know so you you know the trains ran, ran on that how would what kind you know and the and the entire train is made out of wood for instance what kind of a world would that be i don't know it would be fun may may bullet work i don't know it, you know if you want to make it work maybe it might be an interesting way to look at it right so the the point here is not is this going to make sense no the point here is is this interesting to you is this exciting to you is the story seed making you smile is it is it intriguing you is it telling you hey this looks in, you know like something i want to dive into if that happens it's a good story seed if not just keep it aside you never know okay okay let's move to the next set of exercises this one is called first lines All right so i i love books okay uh, and i'm sure you know any one of you who's in your in these sessions you know loves to read so here's what you do you pick up any book and this works really well if you you know play this with another uh, person right so instead of uh, you know you using the first line of the book you just randomly pick a book read the first line and just share that first line without the name of the book with a friend and ask her or him to you know share a line likewise so you do not know where is it from so like when you look at this line when he was nearly 13 my brother jen got his arm badly broken at the elbow that's it this is the first line of a book okay which book is it maybe some of you might recognize it but even if you don't that's fine the idea is not to recognize the book the idea is write this first line and then start writing from here not too much maybe two or three lines but in that process you would have some thought process that's coming just put that thought process down so you say okay yeah at the elbow uh he was in a lot of pain he cried through the night okay and now suddenly this story becomes about you and your brother and this pain that he went through and how it changed him maybe or uh, you know he had broken at the elbow but he did not you know cry at all you know he he was stoic and he maintained his calm not a single tear you know tear and and that made you realize that if your brother you know went through this so can you and and that's how you know how you went on to become this person who you know manages 
pain as a character. So the point is just writing one or two lines after this and, and again, you can turn it into fantasy, you can turn it into magic. You can say that uh, broken at the elbow, uh, you know, uh, he, he was, uh, uh, you know, uh, he, you know, uh, the sword that he uh, picked up, uh, you know, was was so heavy, uh, you know, that, it, you know, he, the, 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 he, you know, he fell down and you know broke his elbow because of the weight of the sword it was a rusted uh, you know a sword that was not sharp but just the weight of it broke his elbow and uh, you know i don't know right you decide write two three lines and that becomes your story seat put that aside okay now which, which book is this from it's from this masterpiece called to kill a mockingbird the point is it does not matter what book it is it should be any book okay here's another one it was a bright cold day in april and the clocks were striking 13 striking 13 okay now you might say digital clock 13 but you know what about your wall clock that has only 12 right and now on your wall clock or you know your wristwatch which has just 12 it strikes 13 it's odd right so you immediately catch it caught my attention i said what is going on here how is a clock striking 13 what are we trying to you know what's being said here now what what comes up next put that down as you know in a line or two Right? So I'm going to give you a minute or about 30, 40 seconds. Just put down whatever comes to your mind for this and we'll move to the next one. By the way, this line is all, all the books that I've chosen. They are my favorites, uh, but this one is 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 amazing. I hope you guys have read it if not you should I'll, I'll, I'll tell you which book it is in a bit yeah 15 more seconds all right and the book is 1984 by orwell the point again is it does not have to be a classic book right it does not have to be a masterpiece it can be your favorite book but if you know the book and you the first line well you probably start writing the similar kind of story seed that is why i would suggest either pick up a book you've never read before have no idea about read the first line and then start putting down something onto paper or else <clears throat> take the first line share it with a friend ask your friend to share a first line without mentioning the book's name and after that Maybe you can, you know, share the names of the book. But this, the first line usually helps you get started. You know, when you see a blank piece of paper, you know, it's scary. You're wondering, what should I write down? Nothing come, comes to my mind when I look at a, a blank piece of paper most of the time. So you, if you think that, you know, I just look at a piece of paper and I start writing down, no. Most of the times, this is, you know, the one thing that really scares me, a blank piece of paper or a blank screen. But having a first line, helps right not to put down the entire story but just to make this one line my own how i use this first line write two or three four lines and now i have something that i built upon this and that something that i built upon that is my story seed right will it turn into a, a a short story or a poem or a book i don't know but at least you have something to get started with and that for me is a story seed okay let's move to the third one this you might know Daira and her demon move through the darkening hall, taking care to keep to one side, out of sight of the kitchen. Okay. 30, 40 more seconds for this. Whatever comes to your mind, next two, three lines, put that down. That's your story seed. Again, you might wonder, you know, what's a demon? Is, is, is it the, you know, demon? And, and it, but it's not D-E-M-O-N. There's a D-A-E-M-O-N, which means it need not be, you know, a demon in the classic conventional sense that we think of a demon. But it could be, you know, based on that. So you have the freedom to actually, you know, decide what demon means to you, right? And come up with your own version of that. And that's the fun of you know something like this you you can take something which has been done before 
which is you know on in front of you and then turn it into your own and each one of you can basis your reading your past reading basis your imagination basis you know the amount of time you put on this each one of you will have a different story by the end of it and that's the power of a story suite okay so this is from philip pullman's northern lights again one of my favorites let's go to the fourth one yes there is a witch in the woods there has always been a witch so what do you say to this? Put that down. 30 seconds. I hope you guys are having fun. Right? This is just a small attempt to get you to start thinking you know, about things around you, right? Whether it's an, uh, something like a stick or whether it is you know books that you have around you or whether these are there are images these are things that are all around us we have visuals all around us we have images around us we have pictures around us we have books around us all you have to do is look at them and say what else can i see in there what else can i sense in there what else can i feel in there what else can i imagine in there and that's it and just that you do not need to get original all you have to do is make it your own. When you make it your own, it automatically becomes unique. Right? And that's what we're trying to do here. So yes, there's a witch in the woods. There has always been a witch. Right? Put down two or three lines and that becomes your story feed. Now, where is, where is this from? This is the first line of this beautiful book. Yeah? So it's, 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 you know, in my case, what I've done is I've taken these books because I love them and I want to also share with you all that in case you're looking to, you know, pick up some books, you know, you can choose one of these. But whichever one is your favorite, take the first line, share it with a friend. Whichever one is their favorite, ask them to share the first line. Have fun with this. Yeah. Okay. When I wake up, the other side of the bed is cold. What's the next line you get from here? Right. Again, I know a lot of people of your age who've read this book. So maybe it's familiar. Maybe you already know which book it is, but it's not. It's all right. 30 seconds. Let's see you know, what you have. And I look forward to you know, all of you all sharing some of the story seeds. Uh, or maybe you know, after you put down the story seeds, you develop them into a story. Please share them with us. We'd love to uh, uh, go through them. We'd love to uh, read them. And if possible, we'll also love to, you know, share a few, uh, you know, and, and let others also get a glimpse of your creativity, your imagination, your storytelling. Yeah. So please feel free to do that. All right. So this is from the book Hunger Games. Yeah. So that was the first line of Hunger Games, the first part, book one. All right. So now oh, we, we, we had something called Image Speaks, which was the first set of exercises we had. Next, we had first line, which is the first line of a book. Okay, and now we're getting to the third story seed, which is basically about news, right? So you might say, "I don't read newspapers," but that's all right, right? We we do read a lot of uh, news online. So if you do get newspapers, magazines, that's all right. If not, you know, there's lots of very, very, very interesting headlines, you know, uh, online, and I'm going to share a few. And the way this exercise works is you look at a headline that you find interesting, that you find arresting, that says something to you and say, okay, what's going on here? So you're not, you're not putting down a journalistic piece. You're not putting down a news piece. You're turning that into some sort of a story and imagine, you know, and bringing your imagination into play. So let me give, share an example. Okay. So let's say if you come across this piece of news that says new type of carnivorous plant found in mountain box, right? And that's the plant. Now, you see something like this. When I see something like this, the first thing, you know, that comes to my mind is, of course, I want to know more about this plant. But the first thing that comes to my mind is, what if I, you know, instead of, I don't know what size it is. I've, I've honestly, you know, not read the article because I did not want to, uh, you know, get biased by, you know, knowing too many facts. I wanted to play in the uh, imagination space. But, you know, imagine that this is as big as we are, right? Uh, in my story, of course. 
right? And all of a sudden, no one knows about this. And all of a sudden, I come across this really pretty looking plant, you know, but, you know, it wants to eat me up. You know, now, of course, there have been stories that have been done, but that's all right. You come up with your own version of what would happen if, you know, you're taking a walk uh, through, a, a, through a, you know, a, a nature reserve and you see this beautiful plant and it's huge and you're like, wow, this is beautiful. And you go to touch it and, you know, it wants to eat you up. What, and, and imagine it, you know, it, it, it swallows you and now you're inside. What are you going to do? Right. That's a story seed. Obviously, you know, I want you to escape, but how would you escape? That's the fun of it, right? Or let's say you become friends with it, right? It, 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 you befriend it and now it's on your side. And, you know, when these uh, monsters attack, you know, they expect you to fight with whatever you have, but instead, you know, they're facing these giant <laughs> carnivorous plants and they have no idea what's going on. You know, it could be, you know, you can make it funny. So, you take a piece of news and, you know, turn it into something, you know, that becomes a story seed. Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm going to give you uh, a few seconds for this, but we'll move to the next news. All right, this is the next one. Ethiopia's false banana plant may be the answer to world hunger. Okay, now we all keep hearing about, you know, hunger. And uh, so this is something that is important to me, you know, try, you know, when I read about uh, some someone coming up with a solution, I, I am always eager to find out what's going on and if there's anything I or we can do, right? Uh, but when I read this, I was a little taken aback because I love bananas and I was like, false banana? What's this, right? So it, it, it was intriguing, you know, not just that it's the answer to world hunger, but it's a false banana. And was, what is a false banana, you know? And obviously, I could have clicked and, and, and read through, but I said, no, I'm going to come up with my own version of what's a false banana, right? And, and I don't want to uh, tell you this because I want you to come up with your own, you know, concept of what a false banana is and put that down, right? So this is, okay, this for me is a false banana and this is going to solve world hunger, okay? So take 15 seconds, answer this, that becomes your story seed. We'll get to the next piece of news. All right. Fossilized dragon man skull may represent a new lineage of extinct humans. Hmm. So, you know, these are our cousins. So, we're Homo sapiens. You know, we had, of course, we had many, you know, cousins as humans other uh, you know species but they've discovered a new one right now now imagine what you you just all you see is a skull so you you have the you know freedom to come up with your own version of what you know th this species looked like right and you know you do not have to you know go with what you already know in terms of the existing species come up with your own right it's 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 called dragon right so dragon man because it, it's you know it's a skull of a man but, you know, imagine, you know, you call it a dragon human, right? Wow. You know, a, a, a hybrid of a dragon and a human. So what? Th that's interesting. I've never, you know, I've never read of a story where you have a dragon and a human put together. I, you know, you, you, you have centaurs and, you know, you have uh, various other hybrids of, you, you know, humans and animals. But what about a hybrid of a human and a dragon? That's interesting. Right, and then you have a, you, you have a story seed. All you do is put down, you know, a hybrid of a dragon and a human. Call it something, and you know, and and that's your story. Okay, so so that's that's how it is, right? You just read something which is, uh, you know, it's an everyday news. Why? Because you have news like this coming in again and again. New kind of discoveries. They are interesting, but you'll find them all over the place. How do you make them your own? You spend a, a couple of seconds a minute or two and say okay what else can i do with this what else can i see in this right and, and i see you know a, a new creature a dragon and a human has someone done it before maybe but i don't know and even if they have it's okay you don't you know when you when you have stories of say dragons for instance uh, or elves you do not have just one dragon story or you do not have just one elf story so even if this something is done before as long as you're not just copying it as long as you are giving it your own spin absolutely fine right one more scientists grow plants in soil from the moon right now till i read this i had no idea that the soil on the moon you know was fertile and you could actually plant something 
right of course it's very interesting and you know uh, uh the the plants are you know this i read i couldn't help it uh, you know the plants do get uh, you know stressed because the soil is of course not as fertile but they do grow so imagine that you can actually with the right uh, equipment you can actually grow plants on the moon because the soil there you know is capable of supporting plant life now obviously there's a there's a whole new science to it but you're writing fiction so you know you have you have the liberty to just say okay you know what uh, uh, you know 100 years down the line the moon is lush with uh, with greenery and, and and you create a world 100 years later where people live on the moon and the entire planet is 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 like an amazon amazon jungle cannot of the atmosphere come up with that's your right that's where you come in but the point is it's a story seed what if 100 years down the line what if we start planting uh, you know through some you know equipment through some ability we start planting uh, you know on the moon today and 100 years later it turns into a forest the entire moon is a forest what if that's all so that's what i got from this yeah and this is my favorite magawa the landmine detecting rat wins gold medal for saving lives in cambodia i was like awesome right and this is the kind of news i love to you know collect not just because it's so awesome you know just look at him it's so you know so cute uh and usually you know i i i i, I i'm not really a big fan of rats but you know it looks so cute but that aside just imagine what if you were you know what to narrate the story or at least the seed from the point of view of the rat what does the rat think of all of this does it really you know want to keep doing this does it enjoy doing it is it you know it looks happy so maybe you know it, it actually enjoys this work i don't know but that that you know is the start of something interesting and all it begins is with an image like this a headline like this you look at it and say okay what if what if i was writing this uh, this story seat from the point of the rat view of the rat what would i have to say put that down that's a story seat Okay, now we're going to get to the next set of exercises. This one I called list five, right? So what you do is you list down one, two, three, four, five things. Character one, character two, an animal or a creature, a place and a thing. Okay, so as an example, okay, um, okay, here's, here's, I just, you know, just to give you an example. So my first list of five i i'm give you two and then i'll you know ask you to come up with a few of your own so character one is anita a human character two is madhura again a human the creature animal is an elf the place is an airport the thing is a flight ticket okay so i just randomly put these down okay uh i just say okay i took a name anita i took a name madhura and i said okay they're humans no thought there i'll you know i love fantasy as i said so and you know lord of the rings is one of my favorites so elf just came up i put down elf uh airport uh, i love uh, airports uh, and because the airport flight ticket so i randomly just put these down okay so now i have these so now i'm saying okay what can i do with this okay so this is just is not the story seed what you do with this you know in about a paragraph or so that becomes a story seed so what what do i have here okay so you uh, we have anita um uh, who is working at the airport and madura comes you know there for a ticket she's accompanied by another you know uh hooded uh person and uh, madura says you know we need two tickets and say okay ask for documents madura gives her passport that's fine other you know for the other person like you know uh she does not have you know does not have a passport because you know uh it isn't or she is or he is an elf and Anita, after getting over the shock of Elf, says, I'm sorry, but, you know, we can't have anyone other than humans flying. You know, we can't book a ticket. You know, if you have to either go you take her as a pet, uh, so you can book a ticket, but, you know, as a pet or, you know, in the cargo. But, you know, we can't have a ticket, you know, because it's only meant for humans. And uh, Madhura is like, you know, you know, I, you know, what do you think? She, you know, she's not a pet. You know, she's my friend. And she deserves the respect. What if she's not human? You're being, you know, you're being, uh, you know, you're judging, you're being racist, this, that. And she's like, yeah, but, you know, the rules state that only humans can, you know, fly on a ticket. You, If you want her to fly, she has to fly as your pet. So now, that's the, I, I don't know where this is going to lead, but that's the story seed. You know, Madhura wants an air ticket for her friend who's an elf. And Anita says, as per the rules, you know, only humans can be given tickets. 
you know, either you take her as a pet, you pay for it, but you take her as a pet and she has to be put in a box because that's the rule. And she's like, are you out of your mind? That's a conflict. How is it going to be solved? I don't know. But that's my story seed. I'm going to think about it. Yeah. So that goes on to my paper. Yeah. So fun. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Okay. My, I'm, I'm giving another example. I'm not going to discuss this. I'm going to leave this to you and then you can come up with your own two or three lists as well. Okay. So what's my, uh, you know, second list? Character one, Noor, a human. Character two is Yomesh, a zombie. Creature, animal, panda. Place, a coffee shop. Thing, chopsticks. Right? Now that's what you have. Now, if you were to have all of this, what kind of a story seed would you make? A human, a zombie, or, you know, a panda, a shop, and chopsticks. Okay? So take 30 seconds and put down something on two paper. Yeah? Now, you can come up with your own list, right? So that's your list. So character one, character two, you know, in the same way as this, as same way as this, just put one character. You can, it can be two humans, it can be anything, right? It can be, it can be two, um, uh, you know, mice, it can be two anything. But humans is good. Uh, that's why I've given a creature animal. So you can, you have the, uh, you know, option of also having two humans and something else. It's fun. And again, it, it need not be fantasy, you know, a horse or a cat, you know, in a, in a realistic uh, story, works, yeah? All right, uh, we're going to, uh, you know, we're on, you know, almost at the end, so I'm going to quickly take you through this one, it's called zoom in, okay? So in this case, what you do is you look at this image, okay? And you zoom in. So what is this? This is a shower, shower head, okay? You zoom into it, and what do you see? Now, you know, an ordinary shower head, all of a sudden, it looks like, you know, maybe there's some planet or there's some chemical reaction going on. I don't know. You know, what do you see there? And that becomes your, you know, the start of your story seed. What you see here, you know, you put it, describe it in one or two lines and, you know, you have something to build upon. Similarly, you know, and again, an ordinary towel and you look at this and it looks like, you know, it looks like maybe... Uh, you know, like you're looking at something through a Google map and it's, you know, maybe some sort of a forest. Uh, maybe that's how, you know, maybe an ant would see this. If it was to look at it from the top, this is the kind of view it'll have. I don't know. So what if, you know, you, you had this in, you know, as an image, what occurs to you, right? Again, you know, you might say this is visual. No, it's not. The point here is you have things lying around you, right? You, you have a pen, you have a bottle. All you have to do is say, okay, if I was to go really close to it, what am I going to see? And, and you know, I've taken everyday objects, shower heads, towel, uh, you know, sand, right? A flower, you know, everyday objects lying around you. You know, if you were to zoom in, what do you see and how do you turn that into a story seed? Yeah. So, we, you know, we, uh, you know, at, at the end of the, you know, near 40 minutes of trying to come up with as many story seeds as we can, right? But the, but the journey does not stop here. The story does not stop here. I've given you some tools that I use that many of, uh, you know, the children, as I said, seven to 77, anyone, you know, into stories is a child at heart. We, we use. So my request to you is keep writing. Your stories matter, right? What you write matters. We are all looking forward to reading in everything from a flash fiction to a poem, to a short story, to a novel, whatever you have. We're looking forward to reading it. Your story matters. So start with the story seeds and start building them one seed after another. Right. Thank you. Wow, it was like, I must say to the audience that like always, sorry, it's a never failed to amaze us and make this event a wonderful and i must say sorry sir no one can replace not even not even a robot can replace you sir <laughs> i hope not <laughs> so with your permission may i proceed with the conclusion note please thank you so much sir uh, so thank you so much to all the audience also and again to the sir it was a pleasure being part of this session uh, and get ready for the quiz based on the session. Visit www.oclfnapur.com to participate in the quiz and win exciting gifts and prizes. 
A gigantic Orange City Literature Festival will be back in November 2022 in Nagpur, the city of oranges. So get ready for the physical fest in coming winter and attending awesome sessions and interacting with your favorite author. Keep following us for the updates of the festival of words. Thank you all once again.